Hey everyone, this is a quick lesson about just other things about derivatives. So I'm going to be talking about one-sided derivatives and also the graphs of derivatives and just how to think of them. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can always look in the, um, the description in this video and I've got some quick, quick references. Okay, so let's start by talking about one-sided derivatives. So you've learned about left and right hand limits at this point, or, or hopefully you have. And so basically, this is the idea then that you can have a, a left or a right hand derivative. So notice that this looks like the difference quotient and, and this is the formula at a, at a certain point. So we're gonna use this in a moment. So this is really the, the formula for the derivative except at the limit, now we're just approaching, um, approaching from the right, right? And then for the left hand derivative, so this is probably not surprising, but then it's just the limit approaching from the left. So that, that's kind of what makes these the left and right hand derivatives. So where would this actually get used? What, like, why do we care about this? So let's think about a function where we know we have an issue with the derivative. So let's use the absolute value of x. So here's the graph of the absolute value of x. And if you think about it, so at x equals zero, that is a, a problem point. The derivative does not exist because that's a corner, right? So the derivative would not exist there. But what about the left and right hand derivatives at that point? So let's start by talking about the right-hand derivative. So I wanna evaluate this at x equals zero, so I'm actually gonna plug that into my formula. So you've gotta know a little bit about, oops, and I should plug in a zero here. You've gotta know a little bit about working with absolute value and limits, and I need to plug in zero, I keep forgetting. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate this. So what this is gonna come out to, and you might wanna pause the video actually to kind of think through the details yourself, that would probably be the best. So if I go ahead and I, I plug in this information, what I end up getting is really just the absolute value of h over h. And so this is talking about really being on the positive side of the absolute value function. So I can rewrite this whole thing then as positive h over h, which this just equals one. So this means that on the right, side of zero, the derivative on that side would have a slope of one at zero. So does this make sense? So let me see if I can make a little more sense of this. So here is the graph, right? So think about this, the right side. So the right side is this side, right? And so the, the actual equation that would model just this side of the absolute value, this is the, the line y equals x. So what is the slope of the line y equals x? What is that slope? Well, the slope is just one. And that makes sense, right, then, that if we found that the right-hand derivative, that the derivative here was equal to one, this is supposed to represent the slope at a point, and we actually know that the slope at this point, that, so this whole side has a slope of one. So on the right side, this makes sense. So now let's talk about the left-hand side. So let's say I've got the limit as h approaches zero from the left. So same idea, plugging everything in. And so the, the thing that happens for this one is since I'm approaching from the left this time, I can rewrite this particular absolute value function now as negative h. So like I said, you've gotta understand a little bit about how absolute value works. So if, you, if you're not sure about evaluating limits with absolute value. I do have some examples on that in example videos, so I highly recommend you check that out. So this then will equal negative one. So once again, let's see if that makes sense. So this side of the absolute value, this side is the equation negative x. So this side is x, this side is negative x. And what is the slope of negative x? The slope of negative x is negative one. So that ties out with the, the left-hand side. So that's kind of a place where left and right hand derivatives can come into play. So that was the first thing I wanted to talk about in this video. The other thing I wanna talk about is interpreting graphs. So I've got, I went ahead and just found the derivative here. So I've got f of x equals x squared, and then the derivative of that would be two x. Okay, so here are the two graphs. So you actually have to change the way that you, you think about graphs when you look at these things. So this is now actually very useful information if you know how to read this particular graph. So here's what I wanna point out. So this side of the parabola, this side is decreasing. 
So if you think about it, if I drew any tangent line on this side of the graph, these would all be negatively sloped tangent lines. And so that's what's telling you that this is decreasing. So now what I want you to do is look at the actual graph of the derivative. On this side, all of these values, these have negative y values, right? So all of these values here are negative, just like all of the slopes here would be negative. So when you look at the graph of a derivative, you want to make sure that you're thinking of negative values. You want to interpret that as negatively sloped tangent lines. And vice versa, on the other side, so now I'm increasing. So if you think about this side, so then I'm going to have positively sloped tangent lines on this side. And so then if I compare that to my derivative graph, these are all positive y values on this side. So these are positive values, so that would tell me I have positively sloped tangent lines. So you just kind of want to repeat that to yourself and remember that this is actually telling you information about the slopes of your tangent lines. So that was it. That was a short video. Um, I have lots of other videos on derivatives, all sorts of good stuff. If you have any other questions, you can drop them in the comments. I'm always reading. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.